Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Welcome to all of you that are new. Uh, we're going to get into the Fed minutes in literally 30 seconds. Uh, make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe. And uh, at the end of this, we are going to discuss what we see happens in real time, all right? So here we go right into the Fed minutes. Mark Committee, 25 basis point hikes were seen as allowing the Fed to assess the economy and the impact of rate hikes as they went along. However, a few wanted to raise by 50 basis points. In common Fed speak, a few is more than two, so there may be another person or appears to be another person out there other than the two whom we know, uh, Bullard and Mester, who wanted to go 50. They wanted to go 50 because they wanted to bring the Federal Reserve more uh, closer, more quickly to the target where they were trying to get to. Several saw risks to the outlook as becoming more balanced. Participants su supported maintaining a restrictive policy stance until inflation was clearly on a path towards their 2% target. Uninflation was seen as unacceptably high. There was substantially more evidence was needed for confidence that inflation was on a downward path. It was important for financial conditions to reflect policy restraint from the Fed. And they did, they did see more financial conditions tightening in 20, than they hadn't seen in 2022. Upside risk was seen to inflation, but a few saw the, the risk as more balanced. Economic risks, however, were to the downside, and GDP was expected to slow further in 2023. Worth mentioning at this point, a little asterisk here, all of this came before the big jobs report and the big retail sales report and the stickier inflation numbers that we had. This is all before those numbers. Uh, there was a period of below-trend growth was seen needed in order to bring supply and, and, and demand back into balance. Finally, there was an elevated chance of recession seen in 2020. 23. Although some said that the China reopening and Euro area, uh, the Euro area growth, uh, which had been better than expected, could help U.S. demand. Kelly. All right. Uh, so many key points there, Steve. Thank you. Who else? Stick around, actually. Uh, let's get some more reaction here. Uh, bringing in Diane Swank. She's chief economist at KPMG. Diane, it's great to see you. And probably the most important thing to highlight is that in the language Steve gave us, he used the phrase a few to describe uh, those who maybe wanted bigger rate hikes, uh, the more hawk. So the upgrade, the more hawkish read would have been if we used the word some, and we didn't get there. Um, that said, the market has still turned negative. So that tells us there's there's not as much in the tone here that maybe the doves were, were hoping for. Exactly. And I think, you know, we did see after this, we know, as Steve already pointed out, Master and Bullard had said they wanted 50 basis point hikes. There was more than just them. I would expect Waller to be on that list as well. But I think what's really important is what's happened since then and how do we interpret where they were thinking about things then versus where they are today. And clearly, the biggest issue that Steve highlighted is the trajectory on inflation is proven stickier and growth has come in much stronger than they were expected. They were looking for this sort of nice, cushy, soft landing with the economy slowing down below trend. And we've gotten the exact opposite in the data so far. And that's really going to put give an upper hand to those people who were hoping to go that 50 basis points at the meeting in March. And do you suspect that th that this increases the likelihood that it's going to be a half point rise in March? And what does that say about either the consistency of Fed policy or about the Fed itself? In other words, does it does it reinforce confidence? Does it uh, cause concern about the confidence in the Fed that investors should have? It's a great question, and I think, one, I think it's because of the data that we've gotten, and the Fed says it's data-driven. The data's changed, and so they're responding to the change in the data, and that is it's now confirmed that instead of being able to go slowly, they have to go a little more aggressively, and frankly, to keep financial conditions tight and to keep from getting this sort of lost in translation, Powell mm -hmm. stayed to the script, but you can see sort of, you know, he, his tenor of his comments were a little less. We saw that rally during his press conference where financial conditions actually eased. The Fed can't afford that now. The stakes are much higher than they were when they had this meeting. You know why they felt confident then? The data's changed. They're responding to it. That's credible. You know, we're fortunate, Steve, that we will get another jobs report. So there's been a lot of questions about the January data and, and whether it's a head fake on warmer weather and not or not. And like you said, you had the nominal spending stuff yesterday. We know it's, you know, maybe it's not. 
My point is February being a shorter month, the meeting is later in March than you would think. It's March 21 and 22. So we're going to get the jobs report. Obviously, we'll get ISM. We might even get into some of the inflation numbers. We might even get retail sales before then. So they will have a chance, hopefully, uh, if they were going to overreact, not to do so in, in response to just one month's data. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with Di- Diane with the proviso saying that what she's saying is perfectly plausible. And it really becomes a debate about what the default of the Federal Reserve is here. I'm going to throw out that I think the default is 25 basis points, and I still think it's 25 basis points. And I have a little bit of backup when I look at the market percentage probability of a 25, which is still, after we now know the word is a few, it's still 85 percent. So I'm backed up by that. And I think I need to throw out here the question, Kelly, or start thinking myself, is what would it take to jar the majority of the opinion to go from a few to many to most to all to a 50 basis point hike? And I think it would be another outsized inflation report, maybe or maybe not another outside jobs report. But if that outsized job report came with strong wage gains again, then perhaps we'd be back on the road to 50. I am going to say right now, I still think it's a 25 because I think that's the default of the Federal Reserve. When I read these minutes, I say, what do we want to do? We want to move by 25s and assess the the outcome uh, of, of our prior hikes here. I still think that's where the Fed is right now. Would you addre- address kind of what I, I want to go back to Diane and get her reaction to what you just said. I saw, Diane, you, you're actually nodding there at, at a lot of what Steve was saying. But, but let me come back to what I asked yeah. Diane. And, and, and let me come back to Steve. If the Fed changes course and, and goes a half point at the next meeting, what does it say about the Fed's control over, over the data or control over the economy? Does it, does it say they, they don't have the grip they thought they yeah. had to turn around that quickly? I actually think what it would say is that the Fed is going to do what it would call opportunistic disinflation. And I think what they would do is they're going to use the strength in the economy to try to wring more inflation out of the economy more quickly than they otherwise would because they feel they have a little bit more leeway if the unemployment rate remains down, yep. if economic activity remains strong. They're looking at these numbers, Tyler, with a completely different attitude than ones we look at. We look at it and say, oh, the economy is too strong. Uh, that means that the Fed has to do more. They say, okay, the economy is strong. That means we can do more and use this opportunity for more uh, disinflation in the economy. So uh, as you could see, they kind of just cut right in and uh, it was kind of weird the way the report came out and they didn't really show the entire report. So not to stretch this out and go straight to it, as you could see here, look at here at the top Fed minutes show members resolve to keep fighting inflation. Right. And so here are some of the key takeaways that I got from this very vague uh, FOMC course you have to read the entire report uh i'll find it and uh post a link in the body of this description of the full report and you have to read it for yourself but here's here were some of my takeaways uh they talked about almost all participants agreed on 25 basis points okay so a quarter of a percent except two which was master and bullard now bullard as we know is a hawkish fed Bullard is a bulldog. He's always hawkish. So that is no surprise. Those two wanted wanted them to go up by 50 basis points in March. Okay, so that is one of the key things. So as you can see, let's see what the market did when that announcement came out. As you can see, the Dow went it literally dropped and went negative. Right. And then it fought back up and now it's back down. It is one of those days where the Dow just keeps trying to decipher the information, very vague information uh, that was that they came out with. Uh, Let's see. What is this? What is this Washington correspondent? Nah, we're not. We're not going to listen to what the White House has to say. Anyway, we're not listening to that. But anyway, the next FOMC meeting, I believe, is March 21st and 22nd. That's important that it is at the end of the month because we have I believe we will have a CPI by then and we will have jobs data by then. Remember that when they got this information, the Fed meetings, the, uh, the Fed minutes, this was done before the job reports. So there there's going to be a lot of adjusting here. 
uh, I believe. And uh, just like the market is trying to decipher which direction to go, um, they are getting this data and they come out with their report and then they get data that should have been in the report. Follow? And so the market is trying to decipher what's what, right? And then on yesterday, we had uh, Home Depot went down and, 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 and so did Walmart. Walmart came back up. But you say, hey, what does that have to do with this economy? Well, Walmart and Home Depot are two major, um, um, you know, you can gauge those and see what we are doing. Bank deposits and credit card debt. Those are some of the things that we could get a read on what you and I, the consumer, are doing, what we're spending money on, right? So Home Depot kind of tanked yesterday. It did because people are not doing, I said DUI, I meant to say DIY, do-it-yourselfers are not spending money so much at Home Depot. I said DUI. Guys, I had a headache yesterday, okay? So uh, this is what I want to keep you guys abreast on right now. This video is sponsored by the top link in the description below. Trust me, you want to go to the top link in the description below. If you're on your cell phone, just hit the title and go to the top link in the description below. Now, I want you to go there first, then there's going to be a video that's going to appear in this box, a suggestion for a video. That video will be a live tonight. Tonight, I will be live with Stock Mo, with Keenan Grace, with Stocks with Josh, and we're going to talk about this data. As we know that the Dow went up, or should I say the indices went up, then they came down. You and I know that does not mean that's how the day is going to end. And by then, we will be able to decipher some more of this information, okay? So two things, check out the top link below because that is a brand new link, something I got that's going to help most of you guys that are watching me. And then make sure you join us tonight, 7 Eastern, okay, um, for our live, all right? We'll see you later. We'll see you tonight. Live, love, laugh, learn, and earn.